Okay, hey everybody, time for another Emacs video. Um, what we are going to look at today is we're going to look at a few little packages that I kind of like. It's not, they're not really themed or anything. It's not like we're going to do Python programming or the undo tree. Um, uh, maybe one kind of a little bit of a bigger uh, feature that I like, but we'll see how it goes. So here we are, we're in our configuration file. Remember, this is our Emacs configuration. It's an org mode file. You know, we got these various pieces here. So let's just add miss packages. I may reorganize this later. Um, we'll see. So the first one is let's uh, let's make some Emacs source. So note, remember what I'm doing is I typed less than s tab, and um, that brought up that little little hot whatever, and uh, you know, like uh, completion or expansion. Um, so so here's a cute one that I like. Global uh, HL line mode true. And I'm just going to do Control X, Control E to run it. And notice how now my line, my current line, is highlighted. Um, I didn't know about this for forever. Um, and I wanted to check out a lot of people like, use Space Max, use Space Max, check out Space Max. It's so much better. Um, and to be honest, it, it, it's clean, it's nice, but it didn't do anything for me. I, I think all that, you know, Vim is better is nonsense. I also think Emacs is better as nonsense. Um, don't tell me it's faster, it's better, it's whatever. Um, they're both super bloated, super powerful editors. Each has its features. If you like modal, um, do Vim. I don't. If you like modal and you want Emacs's power, use Space Max. I don't. I like plain old Emacs. But anyway, um, I did play with it for a few weeks and um, you know, to determine that I'd rather roll my own and um, I find the Emacs key binding with my customization, customizations uh, more than adequate. I love them. I'm happy with them. It works for me. Um, I encourage you to find your own. Um, you know, steal from everybody and pick what you like. But I found some things that I liked in their configuration and this was one of them. And it's always good to steal from other people's configurations. So this is kind of a nice one that, that I like. Uh, let's see, uh, control L to recenter that here. Another one that I like is beacon mode. So that's that's a use package, uh, beacon. And let's uh, go into the editing mode. So remember that's control C apostrophe. Uh, so we'll ensure if we have it and we'll do a config and we'll say beacon mode one. And I'm gonna comment this line out And what this is, this lets you set the color of the beacon, but I'm not gonna, I'm commenting this out here because um, it, this color works for my default theme, Zenburn, but it doesn't work well for this particular theme. But let me show it to you. So let's save that. Um, ah, control C, control, ah, forget the keystrokes. There we go, okay. Um, and so let's actually run this. So let's run this block with control C, control C. And we have an error right because this line is commented and it's a comment so it won't use a, <laughs> that close paren didn't count because of this elisp comment so now we're going to evaluate this block um, i'll split these up later on but now with beacon mode let me um oh save file sorry save the file yes um, it did our evaluation notice that it said the results are true it all worked out let me uh, open up a couple of these to get some vertical space here Notice if I page up and page down, notice that it's changing the color. Let's, let's do it this way. Let's do org, let us show all. And notice when I page up and page down, look at the cursor, you'll see that this problem because the cursor is underneath the letters. But let me go to the top and let me scroll. Uh, scroll down if I if I page down you see at the top there it highlights the the actual line where the cursor is and then it fades it this is really useful to visually see where the cursor is um, I like this when I'm displaying things for my class and I'm moving up and down and I know where I am but this way if there's a scroll um, and I have it set to do the old-school Emacs scroll of half a page at a time um, this just kind of does it you know this kind of flashes so people can see oh there's where the cursor is it's easy to pick it up so let's come back down to here and um that's another little mode that i like um another one that i like is hungry delete so let's put that one in and 
recenter that. Hungry delete. Uh, let's ensure true and config. And I'll clean this up later. Global hungry delete mode. And what hungry delete mode is, so let's rerun this. What hungry delete mode is, is a lot of times when you delete stuff, like let's say we have a bunch of new lines here, you want to delete all the white space. Um, that's most, that's usually the behavior you want. You usually don't want to just delete one space or one line. You want to get rid of all the white space. And that's what hungry delete mode does. It just gets rid of all of it at once. Um, I think it also works in the other direction. Yes, it does. Um, so I like it a lot. Yeah, sometimes I end up having to do a little adjustment like that. But overall, I really like this. Let me see if I can figure out. Okay, six minutes. I got a little bit more. I want to keep this under 10 minutes. So let me, let's see which other ones here. I have a little list here of ones that I want to cover. Um, I guess I'll leave that to the next one. Um, yeah, I guess we can quickly do aggressive indent. Um, and I don't remember how this one always works, but I play with this one. Uh, use package aggressive indent ensure true uh, and we'll do the config and we'll say um, global aggressive indent mode one to set that on so let me just go to a little another file test.py and we'll say def f uh, fly in Whoa, I mean, I don't, um, I don't know if I can have a good example of this here, but let's go into here and let's put in the aggressive indent. Again, keeping an eye on the time, I want to keep everything to. And what aggressive indent mode will. This is bad, I can't see what I'm typing. So let me, let me remove this. I don't think there's anything I have to do. I think it just works. Um, and I guess it may not play nicely with this mode. What it'll do is, yeah, I have to do this in like JavaScript or something. Uh, so I guess I'll show you this one later on. I should have looked this one up beforehand to see which modes it works in. But it just actively re-indents things as you're going along. Um, that's what I get for rushing through this. So what I'll do here is I will, um, Oh, yeah, one more that's really cool. Oh, globe null. Okay, that's a problem. Let's make global. Okay. Aggressive indent is unavailable. Um, let's refresh our contents. If not, we'll just get rid of this one and I'll show you the other one. Um, Unavailable right now. Well, it used to be available. So let's get rid of that. I'll look into that later on. So let's do one other really, really cool one that I like, which is use package expand region. And we'll use this one in the next video as well. And what expand region does is global set key. Do I want to do it that way? Yeah, global set key keyboard C equal control equals ER expand region. So we're installing this guy here. And what expand region does is it does semantic expansion of the mark. So I think we are saving everything. It's doing its install and everything. Um, so if we're here, Let's say we're right over here and we want to mark this. Um, I could just mark this with control alt space to set the mark and then forward or back or control at to do space. But if I do control equals, notice how it's expanding the mark. Let me stop that. Control equals, it first just gives me that. 
then everything in the, the quotes, then the quotes, then everything in the parens, then the parens, then everything in those parens, and it's and if you give it a negative prefix, um, it'll make it smaller. Um, but each time you do it, it's going to give you another level. Now let's go back to that Python code, and let's make a, uh, three functions. And let's go to hello world. And let's put the for loop back in here. And aggressive indent would have just shifted both of those over at the same time. Uh, I know I misspelled it, but now if I do control start here and I do control equals, it expands it to a word, everything in the quotes, the quotes, the line, the for, and then all the way up. So this is a really, 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 really nice package um, that lets you just kind of, you know, I don't even, a lot of times I don't hit the mark. I don't use the control space to mark things, um, particularly when I'm programming. I'll just do control equals and I'll just do it until I get what I want and then I'll copy, I'll paste or whatever. Really, really nice package. So we're at about, about 11 minutes now. So we're going to stop at this point. We're going to save this. Um, in the next video, we're going to do uh, a few other miscellaneous packages. Which is actually going to be a little bit more themed, but I think it'll be pretty cool. Um, so that's it for now. Okay, so um, so thank you and enjoy. Please uh, uh, leave the comments. Keep the comments coming. Keep suggestions coming. Um, I've learned some good stuff from you guys. Uh, so uh, so yeah, that's it.